Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to you wherever you are. It's another exciting episode of Interesting Stuff, where we dive into the more familiar, or maybe less familiar, topics. Today, we're going straight down the middle and checking out TV and cinema. So what was your first film? Do you remember? Maybe it was so many years ago you can't remember. Maybe you've seen so many films you can't remember what the first one was. And how about the cinema? Do you remember going to the cinema for the first time? What was it like? Was it bright? Was it dark? Was it big? Was it small? Did you have popcorn? Oh, the smell of popcorn really reminds me of cinemas. Wow. There wasn't a cinema near where I used to live when I was a kid. So my parents used to drive me to the local town, drop me off. Usually I'd go by myself and check out a film, maybe in an evening on a Saturday or a Friday. And then they'd pick me up afterwards and take me home. It was a lovely little piece of escapism. But anyway, where did it all begin? Well, most people consider the story of the Kelly Gang made in 1906 to be the first ever feature film. Running at 70 minutes long, it was so much longer than anything else that had come before, and it hit the screens just over 10 years after the French Lumiere brothers invented cinema as we know it today. So since August and Louis Lumiere held their first public screening in 1895, there have really only been two major advances in cinema. Don Juan was the first film to have synchronized sound, although it had no dialogue. And the first real talkie was The Jazz Singer, released a year later in 1927. Many film stars' careers ended with the introduction of sound, because they didn't have the voice to match the face, but the industry as a whole never looked back. The next major advance came with the arrival of colour. A two-colour system had been in use since the mid-1910s, but a full three-colour production did not arrive until 1932 with the Disney film Flowers and Trees. And I still haven't seen that one yet. Have you seen it? Do you know it? I'm going to have to hop onto YouTube and have a little look for it. Mm, but I'll do that later. And since the 1930s... There have been further advances, mainly only to do with the size and shape of the projected image. One big screen obsession has always been with three-dimensional screening. This technology has been around since the 1920s and had a first golden era in the 1950s, after which it went into decline. That was until the first part of the 21st century when it re-entered into the mainstream, with many blockbusters now being produced for both 2D and 3D formats. And with the newest of new technology, we also have immersive films as well, so you can step inside the film and look around, almost as if you were inside a video game. How amazing is that? And so with the rise of technology and the rise of the popularity of cinema, there was also money to be made. But which films made the most? What do you think? Something recent? Something older? Well, let's have a look. In fifth place is The Ten Commandments, a religious epic made in 1956. In fourth place... It's E.T. made in 1982, The Extraterrestrial Adventure on Earth. In third place, it's The Sound of Music. The hills are alight with the sound of music. You didn't want to hear me sing, did you? Sorry about that. That was 1965. And then, for sci-fi fans, there was Star Wars in 1977. And in first place, by a country mile is Gone with the Wind, made way back in 1939. And did you know, apparently, it has grossed $1.4 billion. That is a lot. Wow. But the big screen is not the only place to watch films, and its great rival has always been the small screen TV set, which first arrived in homes in the 1930s. And so what was the dawn of television like? Well, television was invented in 1925 by a Scotsman. 
Yes, it's always a Scotsman. It's always a, everything starts from Scotland. You should know that by now. A Scotsman called John Logie Baird. But he wasn't the first person to use the technology. If we go back to 1900, we find that Russian scientist Konstantin Persky coined the word television. And another Russian scientist, Boris Rosling, built the first mechanical television set incorporating the cathode ray tube in 1906. But we in the West like to think that we are the best. But we're not. We're just very good at the marketing. Anyway, following John Logie Baird's demonstration of moving images in 19. 19- 25, there was then the first television station in 1928, and by 1930, just five years after the first moving images, the BBC began test broadcasts. And it's interesting if we contrast that with right now, because in the developed world, the average person will watch over 20 hours of television per week. So other than working and sleeping, it's the activity that we spend most of our time doing. And when we're not watching television, we're probably spending a lot of time talking about the programs we have seen. Yep, it's a vicious circle. You watch it and you talk about it and you watch the next part and you talk about that. Yep, that's our lives. And so back to the timeline. Notes of interest are that between 1939 and 1945, television transmission was halted almost everywhere due to the Second World War. And by this time... There were 20,000 sets purchased in the UK. If we take a little step back, actually, let's go back to 1936. 1936 was the first broadcast from Alexandria Palace. And the BBC broadcast when there were only 1,000 sets worldwide. An interesting statistic, that. Oh, yeah, and also in 1936, there was the Berlin Olympics, which was the first televised sporting event. So lots of little nuggets there to uh, check out. So in 1936, we had 1,000 sets. 1945, there were 20,000. If we jump to 1949 and go to the USA, we find that there was then 1 million television sets in the USA. And by 1951, just two years later, there were 10 million. Then by 1953, 25 million. And it just grew and grew and grew. Until on the 20th of July, 1969, the moon landing was watched by 600 million people. Which is a lot. That's a huge number. Even by today's standards. Wow. So whilst viewing figures and television ownership were already high in the 1970s, the introduction of satellite television and the expansion of the number of channels available has given sales of television sets a further boost. And they've changed from being those boxes in the corner of the room to those nice shiny objects that hang like paintings on your wall. And with so many options available, it's not uncommon for members of an average family to all be watching different programs at the same time. In the USA, for instance, over 75% of households have more than one set and over 50% have three or more. And there's so much choice, not just satellites, but cable and internet programs. It's endless. I wonder, what do you watch? Do you have time to watch anything? There's so much to choose from. A classic film, a game show, sports, cartoons, current affairs. Almost too much, really. I'm often reminded of that uh, Bruce Springsteen song, 57 Channels and Nothing On. That's kind of how I feel about television sometimes. I can't really seem to find something that interests me. And now for the big secret, really. Do you want to know? Do you really want to know? Well, the big secret is... I don't actually have a TV. About 10 years ago, a bit more than that now, actually, I just decided I'd had enough. And uh, I can't remember if I threw it away or gave it away. Um, I really can't remember. But I decided that I wanted to be in control of my own time and I wanted to do my own things and I wanted to go out. And TV wasn't helping with any of that. So I just got rid of it. And that's what I did. However, there's many people out there who can't live without their television because they need it. And I get it. We're, we like to be entertained. We all like to do things differently. Maybe while you're cooking in the kitchen, you can watch something. Or maybe you just chill out in the living room. Or maybe you're crazy, like my mother, who drags her television out into the garden and watches the tennis. And why not? You might as well enjoy life while you can. For sure, for sure. 
Right, that's it. Um, enough about the TV and the cinema. I hope that was interesting for you. There will be another topic tomorrow. Um, you can influence the topics by telling me what you'd like to hear. You can also check out the comprehension questions under the video as well. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope that you're enjoying your day and that you've taken a bit of time out from the television. And just turn it off. Go outside. Go and, do, go and do something creative and constructive instead. Go on. Go on. You know you can. You know you can do it. Just reach, reach, reach for that button. Turn it off. Uh, oh, well. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Oh, well, that's it for today. Um, wherever you are, whatever you do, <laughs> have a good one and uh, stay cool. And that's about it. Take care, guys. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.